Okay, today we're going to talk about bitwise operations. What are they? What's the deal? Why do we need them? Uh, I find I learn best when I understand why I need something before I learn what that something is. So let's introduce what the problem is we're trying to solve. So in our example, let's pretend that we are controlling eight pumps, pump zero through pump seven. And these pumps are nice because they have a wire that you can connect to your Arduino and if you put 5 volts on the wire it turns the pump on and if you turn if you put 0 volts on the wire it turns the pump off so I don't know maybe this is in a, like a nuclear power plant or something and each pump is in a different area and you turn it on to cool off to turn on cooling or something to cool off an area uh, you want we're putting a program in the Arduino that's going to control those pumps so what you can think of is we're actually going to connect with a wire to these pins on the Arduino. These are little holes that you can actually literally push the wire into and you're done. You've actually completed the whole circuit. There's really not much more you need to do. And I want to point this section out here. Notice it says digital and it says analog over here. It says digital and you got zero all the way up through 13. Uh, I want to show this chip by itself for a second. This is what the chip looks like. This is the AVR chip, the microcontroller that the Arduino is based on. And do you see how we have some blue pins, some orange pins, and some green pins? You also have some red and black that has to do with power. We're not going to talk about that at the moment. Ignore the stuff in the parentheses. Those are some extra special things that the pins can do. But the uh, if you just look at the uh, right next to each pin, the PD1, for example, that the blue pins are all part of what's called port D, which is kind of a group, if you will, a group of pins. Uh, group D, or they call it a port, port D. And the green pins all belong to port C, so they begin with PC something, PCU012. And then the orange pins are part of port B, so you, they begin at port 0 and they go all the way up to port 7. And what's interesting is they're scattered all around. They're kind of mixed up a little bit. I don't really know why they did that. Why didn't they just have all the same colors all in a row together, but that's just how it is. The good news is that the Arduino takes this chip, and here's a picture of the Arduino, and, <clears throat> and here it is here mounted on the board, and it actually runs traces, that's the, that's the, the circuit board wires, from the pins such that PD0 of the chip goes right to here, and PD1, as you can see, goes to the number 1, PD2 goes to 2, and it kind of makes them in a nice orderly manner. So pins 0 through 7, for example, are the same thing as PD0 through PD7. So what that means is we can run a command that looks like this, port D in our program. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. We haven't really gotten to programming yet, but I do need to show you a little bit here for you to understand bitwise operations. So if I want to turn all of those pins on, I would say port D is equal to this. Now what in the world is this red thing? The red thing is I highlighted these two characters with, in red to show you that they're kind of separate. This is a way to tell the program that you're, you're, you're speaking binary. So whatever happens after this uh, in the sentence here is a binary number. So this number here is not to be thought of as, I don't know, 11 million, 111,111. This is actually 1111111 binary which if you remember from our previous video is the same thing as port D equals 255 decimal. So these two statements are equivalent but you'll see that it's nice to stay in binary because it'll make things a little easier to understand. So let me get rid of the decimal uh, version of this statement and go back to the binary version. So let's actually introduce a little label, some order uh, to keep track of things. <clears throat> So if this is port D and this is a byte and this is 8 bits, so port D is a byte size uh, port or a register. So when you write to it, you write a whole byte as 1. So that's what we're doing, port D. We're saying port D is equal to all 1s. And that means, uh, so the first digit over here on the right would be as the, is PD0, so that would be pump 0, pump 1, pump 2, all the way up to pump 7. And because all of them are set to 1 here, that means the uh, all pumps would be turned on. So uh, let's see if I oh yeah I've highlighted it. So here's PD7. That digit there is PD7. And here's PD1. So these are just some couple random uh, examples. So do you see now why we like to stay in binary mode? It's a lot easier to keep it and see what is underneath our our legend here. Um, it's a lot harder to do that when you do decimal. So here's some examples. Uh, if I only want to turn on 
port or uh, pump six, I would say port D equals zero B zero one, you know, where the one is only under the six and everything else is zero. Incidentally, this binary number is the same thing as decimal sixty-four. But again, if I just said port D equals sixty-four, this would accomplish the same thing. But I wouldn't be able to easily tell as a human being which where the ones are. In other words, what what pumps are on. So forget that. Let's not use uh, decimal. We'll stick with binary because we can easily see where the ones are. Uh, here's another example, 010, zero, zero. so I've turned on port 6, excuse me, pump 6, pump 4, pump 2, and pump 0. And this binary byte is the same thing as decimal 85. Uh, here's an easy example, I just said all zeros, which is the same thing as zero, so all pumps are off. And one final example, let's just turn on pump number 1. That would be the same thing as saying two, uh, decimal 2. This binary number is the same thing as decimal 2. So, um, but the problem you might notice is that I am assigned, if I want to turn on pump two, I could, I could do the statement, but notice I'm also putting zeros everywhere else. So if other pumps were on and I wanted them to stay on, I would, I would, be, I would actually be turning them off because I'm placing zeros on top of anything that might be there before, forcing those pumps off and only pump number one would be working afterwards. So this is a problem. Let's say that port D currently equals this, which means pump 6 is on, pump 3 is on, and pump 2 is on. And let's say I'm at a part of the program where I realize I need to turn on pump 1. I don't want to mess anything else up. I want to keep them as they are because they're, they're on for a reason. But I do want to turn on pump 1. So how do I do that? How do I turn on just one bit but leave the rest alone? Well, that's where bit operations or bitwise operations come into play. So let's see here. We're going to introduce the idea of Boolean logic, which is very, very simple um, math. I guess it's a form of branch of math. Uh, so let's take a look at what's called the AND gate. And so this is what the symbol for an AND gate is, this weird shape. And it has two inputs to it, A and B, and an output. Now this could be electrical. Uh, this could be a chip that has three, three, three pins. Two would be inputs, one would be output, and you could put five volts or zero volts on the inputs, and then the output would either change to five volts or zero volts, depending on what its decision is. Um, that's generally how it works, five volts and zero volts. Uh, but we could also say one or zero, depending, you know, to uh, signify on or off. So let's do a table here. Uh, this AND gate only outputs a outputs high or outputs one if both of its inputs are high or I'm going to say one. So here is a table I've, I've colored the inputs gray so here's the inputs zero zero gives you zero one zero gives you zero because remember both have to be on so zero one also gives you zero finally we get to both inputs are on now you get an output of one so the only time this output turns on for an AND gate is if both all of its inputs are on all right, so that's fairly simple. I told you it wasn't going to be too hard. Uh, the next gate, and the final gate, actually, that we're going to be talking about, there are more, but uh, this is what we'll be discussing for now, is the OR gate. And you have a, a slightly different look to it. We still have two inputs, A and B, and one output. And here's what the table looks like. In the OR gate, we, only, we need at least one input to be on. So if we put both zero, well, then zero. But if uh, we make one input high, in this case A, it doesn't even matter what B is, we're going to have an output of one. Likewise, if we force B high and A low, then we have an output of 1. And also, if both are on, we get an output of high. So uh, we have three, three instances where the output is high and one where it's low with the OR gate. Again, not too, not too difficult, pretty straightforward. At least one input has to be on for the OR gate to be on. Now, <clears throat> this is uh, an example where we just have two inputs. But uh, what we can actually do is... Um, we can actually do this a byte at a time. So let's imagine we have one byte that's red, and I know I signify we're in binary by putting the zero B in front of it. So this byte really is here around this circle. And I'm gonna and a green byte against the red. What the what you do is you simply go column by column. So let's and one against one. So both have to be on in order for the output to be on, and these are, so we have an output of high. Here's one where both are not on, so we get an and of zero. One one gives you one, zero one gives you zero, one zero gives you all right, so that's pretty straightforward. All I'm doing is doing the and operation essentially eight times with each column one per column. And the same thing with the or. 
Uh, I'll start with the same red byte and the same green byte, and I'm, but I'm going to do an OR operation instead. So either one has to be a one or both to get an output of one. And so we got a lot more ones here, and only a couple at the end. And I want to point something out. <clears throat> do you notice how if we're doing the AND operation and we're ANDing with ones, do you see which is the first four of this byte, of this green byte, do you notice how the red doesn't change? for above it, 1010, 1010 down below. So anytime you AND with a 1, you get no change. And if you OR with a 0, it's kind of like the opposite, AND with a 1, OR with a 0. Here's our ORing with 0. We start with 1100, we end with 1100. So ANDing with a 1 gives you what you start with, ORing with a 0 gives you what you start with. And then also, ANDing with a 0 always gives you, no matter what the red is, you always get output of zero. And that looks like that works. If I OR with a one, no matter what the red is, we always get a one output. So let's summarize this. Uh, uh, this I'm just going to uh, write down as a sentence what we just said. If you AND with a, if you AND anything with a zero, you always get zero, because remember, they both have to be one. And since I'm forcing one of the inputs to be zero, we're always getting zero from our AND. And if I AND a 1 with a 1, I get a 1, which the red and the blue are, are the same, so that didn't change anything. If I AND a 0 with a 1, I get a 0, and 0 goes to 0, so no change. And, you know, freeze this video at any time. Pause it to, to if, you, if I'm going a little too fast, and just look at this and until you get it, because it's not, you know, uh, it might take a, take a little while just to uh, make sure you understand, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, likewise with the OR, if I OR anything, a 0 or 1, with a, with a 1, I always get a 1 output. Because I've guaranteed by making one of the inputs 1, it doesn't matter what the other input is, I get a 1 with the OR operation. If I OR a 1 with a 0, I get a 1, no change. And if I OR a 0 with a 0, I get a 0, no change. All right. And here are the same bytes down below from the previous slide, just to confirm that again. So again, ANDing with a 1 is no change. Let's figure this out. AND, here's the 1's, and here's the no change. 1010 zero, zero up here, 1010 zero, zero down below. ORing with a 1, excuse me, ORing with a 0 gets no change. So here we're in the OR gate. Here's the ORs with zeros. Yep, 1100, one, 1100 zero, 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 zero output. So that appears to be correct. And you can pause the video and confirm the other. You can see that we can always get a 0 if we AND with a 0. Notice we 1100, zero, zero, we end it with all zeros, we get all zeros out. And if we OR with a 1, we always get 1 out. Well, here's the OR operation. Here's all the 1s that we ORed with. And look, all the outputs are 1s. So that appears to be correct. So <clears throat> knowing this, let's turn on pump number 4. So let's say the port D currently looks like this. It numbers, uh, port, uh, excuse me, pump 6 is on already, pump 3 is on, and pump 2 is on, and we want to turn on pump number 4, which is off at the moment. Well, if we look at the OR operation, we can get a 1, we can, we can, we can get a 1 output from an OR operation if we put a 1 underneath here. So let's turn that on. Here is a byte I just made up on the fly that has all zeros except a 1 where I want to have an effect on this byte. And I'm going to use the OR operation again in this situation. And, you'll, and here's the output. And do you see how the output is exactly the same as the input except for this one column? This column, I have turned this 0 into a 1 down below by using this mask. Or they call it a bit mask, which is a special byte where I only have a 1 where I want to affect the red byte. All right, let that sink in for a minute. So it used to be that we would, to turn on pump four, we would do this, port D equals this, where here's pump four. However, remember, that would blank out all the other bits. So let's not do that anymore. That, we, that does more than we want. Instead, we're gonna say port D is equal to port D as it is now in red, ORD, that's what that symbol means. Uh, for me, that's the shift key and above the enter key, there's a, like a backslash. That's where my vertical line is, ORD, with this new byte I made just for this operation. This sentence here, this statement is the same thing as what you see up here. This is what I'm doing, written in C down below, in the C programming language.
All right, so that's how we turn on pump number four. We ordered it with a byte that had a one in where we wanted to turn on. Okay. Oh, and that's called a bit mask. Uh, all right, let's turn it off now. We're going to use the AND operation. So here's me copying those sentences from the previous slide that have the AND involved. And if I AND anything, a zero or one with a zero, I'll get a zero. So I'm going to put a zero underneath, oops, I'm going to put a zero underneath this one. So there it is. And then if I put a one with the AND operation, I get no change. So that's good. I'll put ones everywhere else. And we'll do the AND operation. Let's see what happens. Well, uh, these three digits are still there. They didn't get changed, which is good. And these four digits are still there. They didn't get changed. However, where there was a zero, the AND operation turned that one into a zero. So that did exactly what we wanted. So again, to turn off pump number four, we would just say port D equals, I guess, blank before we knew about bit mask operations or bitwise operations. But we're not going to do that anymore because that turns off everything. Instead, we're going to say port D is equal to port D and, that's what an and operation, a bitewise and, they call it, which is what's going on here, anded with this new special mask that has, has a zero where we want to have an effect. Where there's ones, we will have no effect on the byte. Just That's where these blue lines, these digits didn't change. So that's how we turn a bit off. I want to bring up one other quick thing that uh, will help us in a minute here, and this is the idea of shifting. That's very simple. If we start with a byte, for example, one, 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 four ones, and then zero, zero, one, zero, and then we do a left shift operation, which is shown with this two uh, less than or equal signs. I like to think of just pointing to the left, and we shift it once. What happens is here's this byte up here, um, one, 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 zero, zero, one, one. What happens is this red, since we're shifting only one time, only one digit falls off. You can imagine this digit in red just falling off and going away. And then everything, everybody else taking one step to the left. So this one here now becomes this one here. So these three ones are down here. And then because we have an empty space here, uh, a zero comes in. So we've shifted this byte up here one over. So we got rid of one in the front and a new zero came in the back. That's what a left shift operation does. And we can do it three, we, don't, we can do it more than once. We can say, let's shift it three times. And this is what it would look like. You would lose the first three bits of your starting byte. Those red, di bit, those red digits are about to go away. And then this block will then shift over to the left and then three new zeros will come in. Uh, and right shifting works the same way, except the character looks like this, you, to the right instead of to the left. And I think you probably get the idea. If we shift one time, well then, if we're going to the right, then this red guy is about to go away. And everyone shifts over to the right, and then a zero comes in where there's an empty spot. And then we could shift over three times. So three of our digits are about to go away, fall off, and then these digits move to the right and then three new uh, digits take their place. And I'm showing this for a reason, of course. Oh, uh, one other thing. There's also an operation called inversion, which is very simple. So take a random byte. Let's just say four zeros and four ones. If I invert it, all that just means wherever there's a zero, it turns into a one. And wherever there's a one, it turns into a zero. It just flips it. So invert it yields the opposite. So you can see instead four zeros turn into four ones, and four ones turn into four zeros. And the inversion command is uh, a tilde. So if I put a tilde and then put my byte in parentheses, I get the opposite. Does that make sense? I'm just flipping. Tilde just says flip the insides of this. And here's what it looks like. And then we're talking binary as well. You can see the 0B in front. All right. So let's turn on pump number 4. We were talking from the previous slide. We saw to do that, we would say port D is equal to port D or with our special mask where there's a one in the spot that we want to turn on. <clears throat> However, if you look at this mask for a second, this 0B, zero, 0, zero, 1, zero, zero, it's kind of hard to see. You, I mean, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, you have to count each time. You go, yeah, that is port, that is bit number four. So uh, that's what we want. But you can easily, you can see how you can make a mistake and miscount or something. So there is a shortcut here. We can say this is the same thing as the number one in binary shifted over four times. So you imagine you have one. If you shift it four times, this one would go to here. One, two, three, four. It would end in the same spot. So this, this number here is equivalent to uh, this binary one shifted four times to the left. 
So that means that the above statement you can say is the same thing as port D is equal to port D ORD with the uh, 0001 shifted four times. They are equivalent. These are the same thing. I'm just taking that one and shifting it over four. Now I don't have to think. I could just look and say, yep, that's bit number four because I see the four in there. However, we can make this even uh, easier by saying that this, zero, zero, uh, this binary number here is the same thing as just the number decimal one. So why write it in long form as 0B001 when you could just say it's the same thing as one? So if that's the case, we can sub this into there and say port D is equal to port D ORD with the number one, which is the same thing as binary one, shifted four times. And finally, one final simplification. Programmers hate to be redundant. Port D equals port D ORD with something. Uh, what they instead do is they say port D or equals one. That's the same thing. Uh, that's so you don't have to spell port D out twice. This, these two statements are equivalent. They're the same thing. This or equals simply means port D is equal to port D or with this number. So this might take a little getting used to the, um, the, the look of it, but they're exactly the same. In fact, there is a way uh, in, in C, if you have like X equals three and you want to add one to it, you can say X plus equals one. And that's the same thing as X equals X plus one. This is, this, this is equivalent or equals one. All right. So anyway, this is a much shorter way to turn on bit number four of port D. You use the or equals one shifted over four. It all starts with this idea, but with some simplifications and some e to make them easier to read and faster to write. So let's turn off pump number four. The statement we started with was port D is equal to port D anded with a special bit mask where it was all ones except where there was a zero where we wanted to turn off a pump. So that was from a previous slide. So this number here is the same thing as the this number here inverted. In other words, all I did is I turned these three ones into three zeros, zero into one, these four ones into four zeros. I just I inverted it and then I put the tilde in front of it. So these two uh, numbers are the same because the tilde flips this. So now that we flipped it, we can do what we did in the previous slide. We can take the inside of this tilde and say that's the same thing as the number binary one shifted four times. So now we can say port D is equal to port D anded with the inverse of this number shifted four times, of number one really, binary one shifted four times. And we can simplify binary one to just the number one, remember, this is just one. Therefore, port D is equal to port D anded with the inverse of one shifted four times. And because C allows you to be even more concise, you can simply say port D and equals the invert, the inversion of one shifted over four times. So this statement down below will do exactly the same thing as this statement up here. It's just easier to read. I, I know from programming a lot that and equals with a tilde is going to clear a bit. So I'm gonna, I, can re, I read this statement as saying port D is going to clear the fourth bit. That's all that is. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. All right, so what do we learn? Uh, here's the summary. To turn on a bit in any variable, whether it's a port or any other var variable you want, you say port D, in, our, in this specific case, or equals one shifted over x times, where x is the number you want on. If you want pump four on, then you, you put a four in there, and that'll, uh, or if you want PD four on, which is connected to pump four. Uh, to turn off a bit, which is uh, what they say is clear it, set it or clear it means turn on or turn it off. Port D and equals tilde. So you see the difference in one, this part here in parentheses is the same. It's just you put a tilde in front of it and use the and sign if you want to turn it off. So that is uh, something you can, at the end, if, if, if all you really need to know from this lesson is this final slide, which is how to turn a bit on and off, uh, this is what I want you to take away with. And if you want to, I highly encourage you to watch this video again and do a little bit of uh, exercises, you know, on a piece of scratch pad or something and play around with it. Make sure you understand how we got to the statement. This is how you turn off and on one bit inside of a byte. Because there is no instruction to do it for you, you have to essentially make a bit mask and then use the OR operation or the AND operation to use that bit mask correctly. 
All right, so uh, I think that's enough for now. I'm going to sign off, and we can talk more about this in class. Uh, feel free to watch this video as many times as you want. It took me many times of reading this, this kind of stuff, before I finally got it. So uh, if you don't get it off the, the uh, from the very beginning, first time around, don't feel bad. We'll get there. All right, thanks. Bye.